So I'm out for a bike ride and I just found this coffee table on the side of the road. I feel like I can make something kind of nice out of it. So I think I'm gonna take it. Okay, you know what? Bike isn't the way to transport this. I'll be back with a better vehicle. Let's take this thing apart. Oh, it's dusty. Stay good for keeping it in here for like three weeks. There we go. Ooh, nice. Okay, there's some wood. There's one. Boom. Now we got this guy. This one is gonna be a little tricky to take apart. Cause if you look in the corner, this looks like it was all glued and nailed together. There's a bunch of little pinholes from brad nails. There's no more screws to take out. So I think the only thing we might be able to do is smash this thing apart. Oh, all right. That was, <laughs> that was surprisingly easy. Oh yeah, let's go. Boom. Boom. Look at that haul. That is a lot of good wood. Ooh. So in order to turn these pieces into usable lumber, we need to do some trimming. First things first, there's this molding bit that I wanna slice off so we get a nice square edge. Don't worry, this metal looking piece is actually plastic painted gold, but I did switch out my nice finish blade for a construction grade blade in case there's any more nails hiding in there. I don't wanna ruin this $100 blade. Let's get trimming. So I was able to get all four sides of the leg pieces cleaned up and I am so excited. This wood looks like it's all maple, no knots, very clear, high quality wood. For the rest of the pieces, I could only really clean up two sides on the table saw. I could run it through this way, but it'd be a little dangerous and finicky. So instead of doing that, we'll finish cleaning up those guys with the planer. Let's do it. So here is our haul. We got so much really nice maple. It's hard to even see any detail on camera because this wood is so clear, has such a tight grain, but altogether these long pieces, 35 inches. Well, that does include the miter at the end. We gotta trim those off. Actually, you know what, give me a second. All right. So with the ends trimmed off, here is our haul. We got these four pieces from the four legs, these four, and these four from the stringers, and these four are from the top. So I got kind of a cool idea. If I take these pieces, line them up like this. So that's kind of a nice size, but then if we stagger them, big, medium, small, big, medium, small. I don't know about you, but to me, that looks like a charcuterie board. And it's big too. This is 31 inches long by 15 and a half inches wide. And I'm thinking we can use these to make some risers on the bottom so that it becomes this really nice, beautiful stage for food. I don't know if that sounds pretentious, but I'm just gonna roll with it. I think that's it. I think this coffee table is gonna be a charcuterie board. And I think we're ready for a glue up. Small, ooh, nice. 
So this is 15 and a half inches wide, but my planer can only take 12 and a half inches of width. So I'm gonna split this glue up in half. All right, so that's one stack and I am consciously not putting glue on here. My greatest fear is having to forget and glue these together. So we're not gluing those together. We'll put glue on that side. All right. Last neurotic check to make sure there's no glue between these. There is not. Beautiful. So as you might have noticed, it's a little cold in here. Can you see my breath? And the glue's just not gonna cure if we leave this out here, even with my little propane heater. So we're gonna bring this into the nice warm house to cure overnight. Then we'll take the clamps off, see what we got. Woo. All right. So the glue's been curing for about 18 hours, so it should be plenty strong. Let's take the clamps off and find out. Did I accidentally glue the two halves together? No, I didn't. Yes. There we go. Let's play in these bad boys. That was so much easier to play in than the pallet wood. This straight uniform grain is a treat to work with. And I think we're ready for the next glue up. Let's do it. So just like before, we'll bring this inside to cure overnight. Then we'll start on the finishing. Three days later. <sighs> so it's been like three days at this point. <sighs> Boom. There she is. Well, it's getting there. So at this point, I wanna trim the ends at 90 degrees, but all of these pieces were dowel jointed together. So I need to make sure that my cut is inset far enough to go past the dowels. We need to go, looks like about an inch past the end. Oh no, there's still a tiny, <laughs> there's a tiny bit of dowel showing. We didn't go quite far enough. There's still some dowel there, which I would really rather not show up in the finished product. There's also another one there. So I guess we'll scoot over the fence like quarter inch and take another slice. You know what time it is. I'm an I'm an I'm an Woo. That was so much faster than I expected. It only took 15 minutes to get this sanded up to 220 grit. I'm gonna chalk that up to my good planning job and careful glue up, give myself a little. Ah, that is looking awesome. All right, we are getting close, but I still wanna add a few more details so that this thing is nice enough to sell. I think a subtle chamfer around the edge will fit really well on this. And just in case we make a mistake, I'm gonna start on the bottom. Let's do it. Chamfering these edges can be a little tricky, but it's doable with some creative clamping. Just put that in there. Beautiful. So I've been thinking. I know I said earlier that I wanted to use these guys to make risers, you know, make the stage for food. But the further I progress on this cutting board, the less I like that idea. It just seems unnecessary and inconvenient, especially if someone wants to use this as a chopping board. Having these risers might raise it above a comfortable height so that it's kind of awkward to chop on. I think at the beginning of this project, I was a little insecure about the quality of board I might be able to make. And using these as risers felt like a way to, to add something to the board, to add quality. But like this thing is looking awesome. All right, we are on to one of my favorite steps 
raising the grain. I'm gonna lightly wet the entire board. This will cause the wood fibers on the surface to swell, and once that dries, we can sand away the fuzzies. That way, when we apply finish, we'll get a super smooth result. And my favorite part about raising the grain is you get to see this wood grain in its full glory for the first time. And this maple does not disappoint. Check that out. <sighs> I am so nervous about this step. So my friend Dean Deplanis made me this branding iron and I wanna brand my logo onto the back of the board. I did a bunch of tests, but at the end of the day, we only have one shot to get this right. So we might as well just rip the Band-Aid off and do it. All right, this is it. Nice and flat, uniform pressure. Woo! So obviously a little too much burning, but I'm happy we did too much instead of not enough because we should be able to sand off some of this extra char bit, leaving the imprint of the hand nice and dramatic. Ah, beautiful, look at that. Ah, oh, that is awesome. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm gonna be finishing this with Wood Bomb. This is a mineral oil beeswax blend made by my buddy Ben Neiman at Make For Life Workshop. And we're just going to start spreading this out along the surface. I'm gonna try to get full coverage, but it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. So I used pretty much an entire can on that first side. Two cans of wood bomb. Now I can use my blowtorch to liquefy the wax and make sure that this finish is spread evenly across the board. That is wet. Honestly, this conditioner is already pretty liquidy, so I'm not sure how necessary of a step this is, but I'm following the finishing advice of my friend, Vincent Ferrari, who makes a lot more cutting boards than I do. He has a whole video on this process, so go check it out if you're interested. Yeah, the torch definitely helped even out the conditioner. Now here is where the magic happens. I'm going to buff off the excess and rub the conditioner into the board. Oh my God, the burning looks so good. I'm so glad I took the time, the 25 minutes it took to do that custom burning. I think that's gonna add a lot to the story of this board. All right, final step is to add these non-skid feet to the corners. And once again, shout out to my boy Vincent Ferrari for designing these 3D printed corner jigs. You just put them on the corner, figure out which hole you wanna use. I think that this middle one will be good. Mark it out and it is in the perfect spot. Lovely. So the charcuterie board is done and now it is time to actually sell this thing. I think that the best way for me to sell this board is by posting it for sale on Instagram and YouTube. So I took a bunch of photos, edited them, wrote the social media posts. That took a bit longer than expected, a full 40 minutes. And that brings the total build time on this project to an even four hours. For our material costs, the coffee table was obviously free probably used about $5 in glue. Now the wood bomb is not cheap. Each one of these two ounce cans cost $12 US or 16 Canadian and I used two of them. But to be honest, I didn't pay for this. Ben gave me a couple of these cans cause he's a great guy. And a mineral oil beeswax blend is pretty easy to make yourself. I've done it before and based on the current price of those ingredients on Amazon, a DIY wood bomb, four ounces of it, the equivalent amount that we used, would cost $7.30. 
The only other thing we really bought for this board is the feet, which cost $4, bringing our total material cost to $16.30. So I was hoping to pay myself $100 an hour, but in order to do that, we would have to sell this board for $310 Canadian or $419 US. But based on the market for handmade charcuterie boards, I think that this board is worth about 200 US dollars. That's equivalent to 270 Canadian, making our hourly rate $63. A fair bit lower than $100 an hour, but I'm still pretty happy with that, especially considering that this is a one-off and I don't batch out cutting boards. And the post is live. Now we just wait. So I made the post at 5.30 last night, and I woke up this morning to three messages from people who wanted to buy the board. I was not expecting that much interest this quickly, so I think there's a chance I might not have priced the board high enough, but... I was very conscious of the fact that it's two days from Christmas and I was worried that people wouldn't want to spend much money after the holidays, but clearly I was wrong. I guess I could have started a bidding war, but that doesn't seem right. So I messaged all three of them. The first person to commit to buying it gets it. And Patrick in Portland, Oregon bought the board. He was the first one to commit to buying it and I am so stoked. So like I mentioned before, I'm not really well set up to ship out items and I couldn't pick up a big flat box on short notice, but like a lot of people, I order a lot of stuff online. So I was able to cobble together some bubble wrap and cardboard, enough to package this thing up nice and secure. Not the prettiest packaging in the world, but this thing will definitely be protected shipping 3000 miles. The packaging and shipping added another 30 minutes, making our final hourly rate $56. So about half the rate as I was expecting, but I think this makes a lot of sense. You know, I am not set up to efficiently batch out cutting boards. And I think small woodworking items like this are where economies of scale really kick in. If you're making a desk or another large woodworking project, you could definitely make that $100 an hour because the item is so large and the packaging and shipping is all bespoke. But for small items, that is where efficiency really raises your hourly rate. If you would like to see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can gain exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page by supporting this channel on Patreon. I wanna give a special shout out to my top patron, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.